Hello, dear viewer, and welcome to another exciting episode of the Catholic League Forum. I'm Mike McDonald, Director of Communications of the Catholic League, and this is Bill Donahue, President and CEO of the Catholic League. And today we got a special treat for you as we go through the year in 2021 in review. Uh, today, on our website, catholicleague.org, we'll be uh, releasing a full uh, year in review. Uh, it's pretty long, though, so uh, today we're just going to do a very short assignment, uh, a short overview of it. Uh, I had the assignment of writing it this year, so thank you, Bill Donahue, for that. Uh, great honor. Uh, it was really great looking back at some of the things we did this year. Mm -hmm. And by far, the, probably our biggest enemy was coming from the federal government, the Biden administration. Yeah, I mean, you know, Mike, when I d started this job about 30 years ago, most of the problems we had came from the media. But it's one thing to be bashed by the media it's another, or the entertainment industry. Uh, it's another thing when the power of government, particularly the federal government, tries to take away religious exemptions. Now, I know Donald Trump was a divisive figure for many people uh, because of his persona. When it comes to religious liberty, in my lifetime, no president did more to affirm right. religious liberty than Donald Trump. No president has done a, be a worse job than Joe Biden. And yet, Trump wasn't exactly a very religious man. In the case of Biden, he's a professed devout Catholic. But if you take a look at the policies that he's had on abortion, it's absolutely stunning. Making us pay for it at home and abroad uh, it's it's revolting, quite frankly. It is, and it's not just uh, Biden's policies by himself. He's also surrounding himself by a lot of people that are doing serious harm to religious liberty. Yeah, Javier Becerra was the attorney general out in California, yeah. and he's he, he's a, a pro-abortion zealot. He's appointed the head of HHS, so that was a disaster. But you've got others, too. At the end of the year, they had this guy, Gwandi, who's a Harvard surgeon, but the guy is also in favor of infanticide. Now, how in the world would you choose somebody who's in favor? It's okay to to be in fa to uh, uh, kill a baby once the baby is outside the mother's womb. What kind of president would appoint these kind of people, which is why we're revulsed by it? Right, and personnel is policy. So this is just continuing his uh, attack on the church. And one of the things that uh, we had to highlight this year was uh, what Biden is doing with the faith-based initiative in the White House. Yeah, when you bring in six of the top uh, militant secular organizations, yeah, we got the message at the Catholic League. We're not welcome at the table. Donald Trump recognized all the legitimate world religions and representatives to the White House, but in the case of Biden, he's bringing in the atheists and others. Some of them are okay, but many of them are bashers. They're Catholic bashers in particular. That speaks volumes in and of itself. Yeah, and even if we look at his legislative priorities, right, it's in the news everywhere that Build Back Better has gone down in defeat, but after that, probably his next biggest priority that he had was the Equality Act. <laughs> the Equality Act, for people who don't understand it, it, it encompasses an awful lot. It's very big. Let me just leave you with one thing. If the Equality Act were passed, it could arguably close down Catholic hospitals throughout the United States of America. Is this what our devout Catholic president wants? Apparently so. Otherwise, he wouldn't champion it. And Nancy Pelosi, another practicing Catholic, according to her, uh, you know, it, it's really stunning to look at this kind of record. Yes, it, it really is. And if you're interested in reading more about these topics, do check out the link below. We'll have a link to the entirety of the year in review for 2021. Uh, give that a read. And you can also find it on our website, catholicleague.org. And it's also going to be on pages 8 and 9 if you're a member of uh, the Catholic League uh, in 8 and 9 of the Catalyst. So check that out uh, in your mailboxes coming out probably in the next couple of weeks here. Uh, so, right, we had a rough year with the federal government. Uh, corporations weren't too friendly. Education's always bad. Uh, the aggrieved activist class, they're doing bad things. So, yeah, I don't want people to get the notion that this was just a very bad year, Bill, because we had a lot of victories as well, and a lot of victories that we were the only people fighting on. Yeah, you know, that's one thing I want to emphasize. Uh, I, I sometimes wonder, where are all the other good guys? Where are the allies? Yep. You know, senior fellow at. No, no, we get the job done here. You have to have courage to do what we do, and you have to have the determination to win. And we had a number of big wins uh, this year. Uh, and we began the year with North Dakota. The, a legislature there wanted to basically violate the seal of confession. We've gone through this before, alleging that the priests are learning about all kinds of abuse and whatnot. We pinned their ears back very, very quickly because, again, on our news releases, yeah. we typically list the, the address, the email address of the offender. We depend on you to be on our email list. And if you agree with us, then contact the offender. Let them hear from you. They did that recently with the National Education Association. 
when a woman from Erie, Pennsylvania, up in the northwestern part, she's a member of the National Board of Directors of the National Education Association. She said people asking for religious exemptions uh, should be for, for the vaccination, they should be taken out and shot. Yeah. What? We called for her <laughs> removal and we won. Oh, that's a really good point there, Bill, that you brought up. Because with each of those, that would not have happened without our members. And we really thank each and every one of you for your support over the years uh, getting involved in these big fights. And another big fight we were in was in uh, Pennsylvania with the Supreme Court ruling there uh, regarding the due process rights of accused priests. Right. You know, I'm very proud to work with Jones Day. And in, their, their, in this case, they have their firm in Pittsburgh, they're wonderful lawyers, Mickey yeah. Paul and others. Uh, they, they've always been successful with us. Priest rights are being eviscerated all over the country because of these aggressive prosecutors. And quite frankly, a lot of these priests are innocent of the charges. And that you don't hear much about that. This was a case of an old case. Some woman said that she claimed that she was abused by a priest a long time ago. She never did anything about it. Then she says, well, the clock should start ticking in terms of the statute of limitation when it came to my mind, uh, not, opposed, not when the actual offense took place. Anyhow, she wanted to basically reverse the entire statute of limitations in the state of Pennsylvania. We won on that, and we won because of our lawyers. I'm very happy about that. Yeah, that, that was good. And, you know, not all the time is it like uh, you get to go out there and plant the flag uh, right. in terms of victory. But we still have a lot of great outcomes. And, again, a lot of that is thanks to our great members. Uh, earlier this year, we took on the MLB. Yes. Uh, the Major League Baseball, you know, I can't stand the hypocrisy. They're claiming that you shouldn't have an all-star game in Georgia because of the voting uh, legislation there. Well, first of all, the voting rights legislation is fine. But beyond that, you want to move it to Denver? Okay, fine. Why are you then, after you lecture this country about yeah. being racist, I'm talking about Rob Manfred, head of the Major League Baseball, why are you so cozy with China? The communist yeah. Chinese have been destroying, through genocide and slave labor, the Uyghurs, a Muslim minority. We went after Nike and the NFL at the end of the year for this as well. Yeah. But I'm very happy that we got under the skin of the MLB because that guy wound up calling some very high people in the Catholic Church whose names I won't release, but we, we got under the skin. Sometimes it's not necessarily a victory per se, but if the message has been delivered to people in a national organization and they've been stung yeah. by this, uh, then, yeah, that's something that's a victory in its own right. Right, and like you pointed out, this isn't just some little minor league <laughs> no. operation. This is the major league, right, after all. Right, exactly. Uh, another big uh, scalp for us was Costco this week, uh, or last week. We decided to uh, highlight some of the bad things they were doing around Christmas. Yeah, I mean, you know, you have to wonder. Costco's got a nice reputation, so does the Salvation Army. We went after them, became, they went, quote, woke. They, they went to the left, and we, ha we had to point that out. Now, here you had Costco, you had the, the editorial director of their magazine, who comes out and he says something nice about Kwanzaa, which is made up by an ex thug out of whole cloth, uh, and Hanukkah, which is a legitimate Jewish holiday, though a minor one. We get a snide, very short yeah. commentary that we put out that he put out there. Our people came down their throat. The guy calls me up on the phone. Maya Koopa, Maya Koopa. Uh, I set him straight though. He's not likely to do it again. I also want to mention that we had another victory there too, Mike, with regard to Twitter. That's right. They came out and they. Did they they actually said to Catholic World Report, which is a nice prestigious publication, that we're gonna we're gonna drop your feed, we're gonna freeze you out on Twitter because you mentioned that a man, who says he's a woman, Rachel Levine, uh, got some high posts under Joe Biden, of course, uh, they wanted to close them out. We went on the offense, and within three hours after they got bombarded at Twitter, they reinstated uh, the the uh, the Catholic World Report. Uh, platform. So we're very happy about that, and we can actually talk for a long time about that. We're always in the fight. We win many of them. We never shy from a fight. Never. Unlike other organizations which don't want to get their hands dirty, we don't mind. We're gladiators here at the Catholic League. We're not spectators, people. That's yeah. for others. Yeah, we're in it, uh, and as you'll see throughout the course of the year in review, we were right involved in pretty much every big fight you can think of that involved religious liberty, the Catholic Church, religious freedom, anything like that, traditional values. We were right in the heart of it. And uh, again, please do check out the report. We'll have a link in the description below. And also, please consider giving uh, this video a like and a subscribe as well, because that will also help us with the algorithms and get our message out to more people so we can keep doing the great work that we do. Thank you again for watching, and Happy New Year.